Hi everyone, I'm Donna Jacunas, and this is a sequential artist workshop get together for Procreate and other tech tips. And today we're going to talk about the liquify adjustment. And we talked about all the other adjustments a couple weeks ago, but we didn't uh, go into liquify too much because you can do a lot of stuff with it. So I wanted to give a whole hour. So I'm going to pin um, or spotlight for everyone my iPad and we will start looking at that. So this here, this messy thing here is a liquefied version of that. Okay, and then I change the colors. Of course, normally that's not what we wanna do with liquefy. Um, <laughs> we want something that has a purpose, but I just did that for the heck of it, for fun. Um, so these are the things you can do with liquefy or the things that I know and have used it for so far. There's probably a million other things. So you can distort and warp your sketches and drawings and finished art. You can work with shadows or like drop shadows and make them more realistic or dynamic looking. Um, I'll show you how I make drop shadows and then I'll, I'll show you how you can like tweak them to make them more interesting. Um, we're going to look at doing textures and shapes, making textures and shapes with Liquify, then a bunch of weirdo miscellaneous stuff that I have in one file that I was messing around that might give you some ideas. And then I'll show you a couple of comics pages where I use Liquify on the text. So we'll start with um, whatever it was first, distort and warp. <laughs> so we'll start with distort and warp. And at the end of the other one where we were talking about the uh, other adjustment layers, I made this girl's eyes bigger than they were. And I used Liquify to do that. And I might've made the cow's eyes bigger, I'm not sure. Cause I don't really remember how big <laughs> they were in my comic. But um, Liquify is like really cool for tweaking and adjusting your sketches. You know, and this is something that you cannot do at all in um, real drawing, okay? You can't stretch and distort and deform your drawings um, on paper, but you can do it with digital. So I have my layer with my sketches selected and I have them all on one layer in this particular drawing, but you have to have the layer selected and then you go to the magic wand and way down at the bottom in Procreate 5.2 is liquefy. In older versions, it's up somewhere higher, but it's in that magic wand menu. You click liquefy and you've got a whole bunch of choices. Okay, so let's just do them in order um, for right now. So we'll start with this one on the left with just push. And whenever you select one of these, you always have these four options on the bottom. The first one is size. Second one is pressure. I always leave the pressure up. I like everything to be pressure, really pressure sensitive when I'm using it. The third one is distortion and then momentum. Okay, so the size is basically the brush size of what you're gonna liquefy because liquefy is a custom or specialized brush. So for example, if I make this really big and go in here and move it, look, it's moving this and even way up there. See how huge that is? As a brush, it's moving so much stuff. Now I can do undo and go all the way back to where I was inside liquefy. I have not turned liquefy off. I still have my wrench icon or a magic wand icon, sorry, highlighted, and this is still up. You can use undo and redo within this liquify world. Okay, so that now if I make this brush really small and I go and tap, look, it's only moving a tiny area of the lines. So it's, not, it's not pushing everything. Okay. So I can undo and redo within that. So push, now I, I actually hit too many times undo and I close liquefy. So I have to go back to my wrench. And I know that because the 
menu disappeared on the bottom, back to liquefy. Okay. So I can do this to push to adjust some things in my drawing that I want to change. So say I want to kind of change the top of the cow's head, um, depending on which kind of cow I'm drawing, the cow's head might um, be have more of a bump on it or less of a bump on it. So I can change the cow's head by setting it to push, making the size that I want and dragging it around. So the cow that I happen to be drawing had a kind of tall thing on the head. So I'm just gonna make it big. And then say I want the cow to have a little uh, bump because cows are really bony. So I want the little back end of the cow to show like a little bump from the bone. I can make it really small and do that. So push can push, push things around. Um, Okay, now I don't think normally we will use twirl right and twirl left much in all the time. adjusting our sketches. Sorry. Um, but what it does is, and you'll notice right now I'm showing you everything with distortion all the way down and pressure all the way up. We'll look at what happens when you play with distortion later. If I, if I use twirl right and I tap somewhere, it makes a spiral. Well, actually, that's kind of cool. If I was making some kind of creature that I wanted to have um, curly things off the side of its face, then I could go to twirl left. Whoops, distortion's up, turn it down. I could do the same thing on the other side of the face. It's the, I use this, this particular one for other things, not generally for changing my lines. So remember, I said you can do two tap for undo, but there's also a thing here called reconstruct. If you tap reconstruct and you brush over your previously oh, cool. liquefied area, it slowly pushes it back to where it was. So if you went too far with something and you want to go back a little bit, um, you can mess around with reconstruct. And that works with any of these. So we looked at push for adjusting the lines, twirl right and twirl left. They just spiral everything around. It's really fun to do with color and you can make cool shapes with it. So I'll show you more about that later. I love to use it um, for making uh, curly hair and things like that. So that's, that's we're gonna come back to that one. Uh, twi the tw twirl ones. Okay, next one is pinch. Again, I'm gonna turn distortion down, leave pressure up and momentum is what happens after you're done when you pick your pencil up. If you put momentum all the way up, when you pick your pencil up, the liquefy thing keeps going for a couple of seconds. And you put the momentum, momentum all the way down, when you pick your pencil up, it stops immediately. So I usually leave it like 25%, but I play with it sometimes depending what I'm doing. Because sometimes it's fun to let it keep going for a little bit and then stop at its own point. Um, one, of the, one of the cool things about liquefy is that it's semi-random. So you don't always control it completely, which to me is fun. It's like doing watercolor or, um, well, watercolor is a great example because you know you once the water and the paint hit together, you don't have full control over what it's doing. So this gives a little bit of that um, freedom to your drawing digitally to make it look less digital or less stiff. So we'll say pinch. Gonna leave it at a small size for now. We can change that if we need. Pressure up, distortion down, momentum twenty five percent. Let's pinch this eye. If I touch right in the middle of the eye, wow, he looks really mad now, doesn't she? I guess it's a she because it's a cow. So I pinch the eyes, they come down. I can go back and do it. 
maybe it's not the eye, the, maybe this nose is too big. I'm gonna make the brush a little bigger because the whole nose is a little bigger. And I can pinch and it just pinched in the whole face of the cow. So you can completely change the shape of your drawing. And this might work better on uh, a whole face. Now that's a skinnier wow. cow. See, I just whoop, drew the whole face in, not just the nose, because that other one wasn't the whole animal. So that just changed the whole perspective, right? The perspective that you're looking at the animal just by hitting it with pinch. Now we have more of a perspective, right? The back of the animal is further away because I made the back of the animal smaller. So it looks like a forced perspective. So Susan says, do the lines stay pretty crisp? The lines um, can get ruined if you do this too much. If you do a little bit of tweaking, it can be okay. It depends on your style and what brush you use for your lines. I use, a, I use dry ink, which is a rough brush anyway. But um, most of the time, it's best to do this stuff on your sketch before you ink it. Then when, you know, even though it's digital, when you do your final lines, you've got the, you know, you're not making big changes. A few little changes you could get, get away with, again, depending what brush you use, because it will change, it will change the line. It'll make the line skinnier if you're pinching in and fatter if you're growing it. And so depending on how you ink and if you want all your lines to be consistent, it can mess up your line work. So um, it's, I mostly try to do this on my sketches because I usually, I sketch things a lot and they're a little blah. When I do my first drawings, the faces, the, the poses. I'm not that loose with it yet. I'm not that good at the gestures and everything. So sometimes they just look a little blah. And by you know doing some of these things like that, I can get like a little bit more impact and then I can ink over it. I don't worry about the lines. But a lot of times I don't ink anyway. Sometimes I draw my, my pencil drawings with the dry ink. And if they come out really good, I don't ink them quote, ink them. Okay, so pinch, we can make her, oh, that's too big. I didn't want to make her whole head smaller. I just want to make her eyes smaller. So I'll make the brush really small. That's too small, didn't really do anything. Now her eyes aren't so largely distorted. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect if this is my sketch because I'm going to draw it over again, but it still gives me the proportions that I'm working on. Okay, so you got pinch, expand is the opposite. Let's make our eyes bigger again. Let's make, whoops, the brush is too small for doing anything to the rear end of the cow if I wanted to make the back of the cow fat uh, or the head really big. Again, um, I, like, I use this a lot for like just changing proportions of the face if I want to make eyes bigger or smaller or, or ears and small things like that. If you lower the size of the brush, you can work on smaller things. So you can push things around, you can twirl them, you can pinch them, you can expand them. Then there's this thing called crystals. And what this does is it messes up your line. Mm. Or if it's the color area, it messes up the whole color, color area. So like if I wanted to make it look fuzzy, I could use that as a way to add like fuzziness to it. Um, you can use it to make a whole thing look a little bit wonky, scary, you know, and that's small, you can make it bigger. So it's like kind of a good special effect for a, for a horror thing like, oh, 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 oh. Um, you could use this on, on some text if you were doing a, scre a scream or something. You could make the scream word get really jittery. Because um, you can do all this stuff on text too. We'll look at that more later, but let's just try this on, um, on this text. Now, I've switched layers. 
So liquefied's gone away and I have a text layer selected. So when I go to my magic wand and liquefy, it will let me liquefy the text layer and I can make my text look all scary. But just so you know, when you go back to your layers, it's not a text layer anymore. You can see it's not showing the, the letter for the text and it's, it's become rasterized. So it will let you liquefy text, but then it's not text anymore. So make a copy of your layer first in case you have a typo and you have to go in and edit the text later. And we'll look at that more. Okay, um, let's see. Back in liquefy, let's go back to the layer of the characters. There's one more thing here um, that I wanna show you and that is edge. Edge is really interesting. You have to move the brush to get it. You can't just really tap. But like if I move the brush down, look, it makes my whole girl skinnier. Now, I didn't have anything selected. So as I make the girl skinnier with the brush really big like that, it's pulling the cow over to her. So if I go back and undo that, I can use liquefy with selections. So if I take a freehand selection and go around the girl, and then go back into liquefy and use edge. Look at that, it's not doing it. The brush is too big. Can you see how big the brush is? I, I have my iPad set so it shows the brush line. So it's not really affecting anything because the brush is bigger than the area. So we'll try making it smaller. So that doesn't really work well with the selection. That's not how I thought it would work. I thought it would work just the same now. Do I have the wrong layer selected? Yeah, I have the wrong layer selected. Okay, so we'll go back to liquefy. We'll go back to edge. And now I can make the girl skinnier and it doesn't affect the cow because I'm only working on that selection. Okay, so as I have to say in every single class, or a video I do, make sure you're on the right layer because you know I do that like five or 10 times a day, try to do something, doesn't work. Why isn't it working? I'm on the wrong layer. Okay, all right. So that's uh, things you can do to your outline and um, reconstruct again. It only works that when you're in there. I had left liquefy and come back. So now reconstruct doesn't work, okay? When you're in liquefy, it's like one session of liquefy. So this uh, reconstruct, adjust, they're very similar. Reconstruct and adjust. Adjust makes what you did stronger or weaker. And reset is like undo, undo, undo. It does everything you did in this liquefy session. Once you leave liquefy and turn that off, everything in there is set. You can undo it the same way you can undo anything, but it undoes the whole thing. It doesn't just undo the little steps in the liquefy. So when you're in liquefy, it's almost like you're in a whole nother Procreate drawing. It has its own set of undos and its own set of redos. But once you leave liquefy, everything you did in that liquefy session is locked together and it's done. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. All right, let's look at some other stuff. Um, well, these are the, these, you can do the same thing with these guys. I have these guys here and I can go in and I can liquefy. Um, and uh, this is fun. If I go to twirl right and make it small and add distortion. So when I did twirl with no distortion, it makes one spiral. I'll do it big so you can see. See, it's just making one big spiral, right? If I add distortion, it makes a bunch of little spirals when I do that. Now, see, that could be cool just with colors to do like some abstract art. But what I wanna do here is add a lot of distortion, make it pretty small and make his beard curly. Isn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> I love to, I, I don't know why, but I really like um, doing hair with, with this. Now um, you would, if you wanna be really careful and not get it into his face, you would select just the hair first. 
but I didn't bother with that. So that's what distortion does on the twirl right and left. It changes it from one big spiral to a whole bunch of little spirals. Everything else here you could do. Um, I just want to show you like how how cool this looks. Like when you when you change things. And sometimes it doesn't work, but like when you change things, the perspective of the face changes and it changes the whole expression to me. So I love to mess around sometimes with the expand, like, oh my God, <laughs> with that stuff for like uh, really um, emphasizing the expressions. Oh no, you know. Um, <laughs> I think it's really fun. Um, also, you can use it to kind of push the face around. So it's kind of more of a, you can use this with push too, to kind of move things, to change it. Now it's not a, a face on view, it's like a three quarter view. You can, you know, change stuff like that with, with these things too. Crystals is kind of fun for hair too. Um, and you can add distortion to it too. And it just makes it, anytime you add distortion to a, a liquify, it makes it more crazy. And then depending on the size of the brush, obviously how far it goes. So all those things, I really love messing around with my characters with these, with these um, controls. And then just another one, another example of liquify select the layer, liquify edge, and I can draw that guy in, make him get really skinny. Um, if I go that way, it doesn't really work because his edges are too far apart for that size of the brush. So I have to make the brush bigger and then I can like pull him in from top to bottom. But I'm not sure that does anything worthwhile. I saw I saw a thing, a sad thing on a Photoshop, a Photoshop um, lesson where they said uh, you can use that edge thing to make yourself skinnier in your photos or to make your models skinnier. So if you ever want to do that to yourself in a photo, you can use liquify edge on yourself and you'll be skinnier. So this is more of the same thing. I did pinch um, I'm not good at drawing like scary, creepy stuff. Like, so that's just me being mad at social media one day, right? And so what I did was I did a liquify pinch, pretty big on my nose. Whoop, now I look really mad, right? If I go bigger, I don't know what that looks like. But then if I add some distortion, I look kind of like a monster. So for me, like to do like scary, mean looking things, this this kind of thing helps me a lot. Cause otherwise to me, my stuff looks really cutesy and that looks still probably cutesy. A lot of people tell me my drawings look like um, children's book illustrations, which is fine with me, but that looks like a creepier version than that one, right? So, <laughs> so distorting things, I mean, that's a big part of, I think, what, what people do in body horror is they distort the body or the face and that makes it look kind of gross to us because it doesn't look like a, a, a real person. It makes it a monster. Okay, let's look at some shadows. Ready? Um, before, before we go on to shadows, uh, do you want to ask any questions? I'll just okay. comment Audrey that said, this is great. Go ahead. I'm just going to comment that this is once again a great workshop. Cool. There's so much stuff you can do that you can't always invent yourself, right? I learned all this from other teachers. Um, yeah, this is so much that you can't invent. Um, Audrey said her reconstruct isn't working. So maybe the brush size was too small or she had already left the a liquify session and went back in because reconstruct will not work if you leave and come back into liquify. Oh, okay. It only works in that session. And then make sure your brush is big enough. Otherwise it's only going to be making teeny, teeny changes. Okay, so you can't leave. Okay, gotcha. No, once you, you leave, it's, it's locked. 
I mean, you can undo the whole thing with your double tap once you leave, but you can undo it bit by bit or reconstruct it bit by bit once you leave it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, right. So we're gonna do some drop shadows and they use liquify and other things. Um, you don't need liquify to do drop shadows, but it makes it more interesting. So I made, I made this. So first I'm gonna show you how I made this little page curl because we're gonna make shadows under the page curl. So what I did is I had this group here, which has, and we don't need the, it has writing on it, but that's irrelevant. It has a, a solid piece of paper and an outline. You can have them in one layer. This has to have an outline or it doesn't really work the way I'm gonna show you. Um, so what I did was I duplicated the group. So you highlight the group, swipe left, duplicate. And then the new group, I said, um, clicked here to get the menu and said flatten because I wanted it to be one layer. So now I have a duplicate. I have one that's a, a group and one that's a single layer. And then I wanted to change the color of the, the single layer um, or the group. I didn't want them to be the same color. So I went in and, oh no, and this, I'll change the color of the group because the, the color thing is in a separate layer on the group. So now I have a dark one and a lighter one. So the way I made the page curl is um, in the, select the layer, use the arrow transform tools and pick warp. Now to make a per page curl in warp, you just take the corner and drag it up. And you can do that, you know, diff varying amounts. You can make it different sizes. So in this case, I had selected the whole piece of paper. So it's making a big page curl, right? Let's just go out of this, undo it. If I want to make a small page curl, I can make a rectangular selection of the corner. And now if I do the warp, it only moves a small amount make the smaller page curl. So that's just a cutesy little thing, right? So now I have a page curl. So the, uh, I'm gonna show you the one I did before because it matches the shadows that I made before that I'm gonna show you. So I did two kinds of shadows here and uh, you wouldn't probably use them both together because if your lighting is either coming from here or here, you know, you have a light source somewhere. Um, and so the shadow will go, the light makes the shadow shine. And you know, so if your light is here, your shadow is gonna be down here. If your light's over here, your shadow is gonna be up here. They're gonna be opposite, right? So what I did here is that here I made a shadow going underneath the page that's turning. So the back page has a shadow on it. And I made a dark solid area and then a blurred area. So I'll show you how I did that. I started by duplicating my page curl layer. So the top layer, the new one that I made with the page curl, I'm gonna duplicate that. Then I'm gonna select the one on the bottom. And I'm gonna go up to adjustments, hue, saturation, and brightness, and turn the brightness all the way down. So my bottom one now is pure black. And my top layer is the colors it was. So going on the bottom one, this is where the liquify is gonna come in. First thing I'm gonna do is select it with uniform and I'm gonna move the black layer a little. So see how it came out like, and it makes a little hard edge shadow. It's very uniform still. If I wanna make it more natural, I can go in with push and I can push that hard edge shadow around a little. Where would it be closer to the paper? Where would it be further apart? I can mess around with it and, and change that. Generally, the hearted shadow or a shadow is closer to the paper when the two 
closer to the item when the things are closer together and the shadow gets further away when the things are further apart. But you can just mess around with it. But you can see how I've changed it so it looks more like a natural curve, not like just a copy of the other one. Okay, then I go back in here. I duplicate the layer again. Well, you notice I also made a drop shadow on my text because it was in the same layer. That's cool. So first layer, second layer duplicated and liquefied a little bit. Then I duplicate the black layer. And then the one all the way in the back, I go into the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I can blur out my shadow how much I want. And then I can move it again. If I don't want the shadow up there, I only want it on the lower right. I can move it again. I can lower the opacity. I can do all kinds of things to it. Um, and I can decide if I want that hard black, hard black part of the shadow or just the blurry part of the shadow. So um, let's see, it looks cool on the lettering too. You can do it on lettering on shapes, whatever. So that's one shadow that I did there. And then I did the same thing in a different angle. I made a copy of the corner. I made a copy of the corner and put a shadow on it. And I did it exactly the same way, only um, before I did it, I made this little copy, I cut and pasted the corner so that I would could put the shadow behind it. And then when I show the rest of the paper back, it looks like it's making a shadow on it. So shadows are kind of cool that you can do with liquify. And so the liquify part of it just makes the shadow maybe look a little bit more realistic than if you did all that without the liquify step. I did some of those in here. I did the same kind of thing in this fake paper cut. And this um, I learned um, from Beth secondhand from Lisa Bardot, who has a class on doing paper cut on Skillshare. And she shows this and a lot more stuff that's really cool um, on how to paste the layers and put shadows and things on it, excuse me. So it actually looks like you glued pieces of paper together and there's a dimension in it. That was a really fun class. It's it, the basics of what I just showed you. And then she had some more tr you know, tips and tricks and things and you can put folds and like, you know, written in this and by changing the hue, you make one piece look like the lights hitting it at a different angle and things like that. Almost decoupage if you've ever done that where, which is like collage, but the glue is really thick. So the makes of the layers like stack further apart. So this is the same technique I just showed you, just used on more, a bunch more layers. You know, so if you say in my hair layer, um, this is the layer I use to change the color. This is the, just the outline of the hair. And then I did the shadow. So there you can just see the hair with just the shadow. So. So you can do lots of stuff with, with it. You can use it in anything. Okay, so that's shadows. Okay, now I'm gonna make some shapes and textures. So there's two things I did in here with liquify. One is I made the water waves with liquify and I made the texture in her hair with liquify. The first thing I'm going to show you the water. So this is like so easy. Um, I'm going to pick a blue color and I'm going to take a big just a big fat brush doesn't really matter because what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw make a new layer. I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to fill it with the color. Okay. Now this is so easy and so super fun. I went into adjustment, liquefy, twirl, right, distortion down, 
size pretty big. And I just went right along the edge. Oh man, that's too big. I went right along the edge and I would hold it down for a couple of seconds. And it makes waves. Isn't that like so cool? Now you'll notice, what should I throw, throw the momentum up? I'll show you how it keeps going more when I let go, watch. Did you see how it kept going after I let go? That's what increasing the momentum does on the thing. And then you get, you know, a little dynamic, natural thing in it. So that's, I, I did a whole comic with, where I did all my water with waves that I made like this, because I wasn't really into drawing natural waves and it's a comic. So um, yeah, a couple people have to go catch up in the video, no problem. Um, and so that's the, that's the waves. I mean, then you could do it again if you wanted them to be a little different, or of course I could duplicate this one and then move it and, fill it with a, a different blue color, you know, and then I could, I could have it, you know, layers of waves. I love the pattern it makes when you have, when you do that. So it has like the top and the bottom. Other thing you can do then is um, like a two-step. This will be similar to what we would do in the hair. So I'm going to alpha lock this for right now. And then I'm going to go in and pick an aqua color. Sometimes water has aqua in it, right? And then to pick a texture brush, I use this wet brush strokes brush a lot. I don't even remember if it came at Procreate or where I got it. Um, I, I, um, I don't remember. It has the little mark on it. So maybe that means it came with Procreate. Um, wet brush strokes. Anyway, it's just a texture brush. So I'm going to make it pretty big and then I have alpha lock on. So it's only going to make changes inside the water. I'm going to pick a really light color now and add some more. I mean, so that looks kind of cool, like a water texture anyway, right? But now I can go back in and liquefy that. Now you cannot liquefy with alpha lock on. It just gives you an error. So if I go to try to liquefy it, it says alpha lock layer selected. So I can't do that. So I have to turn alpha lock off. Remember alpha lock, when you swipe with two fingers, it means whenever you color, it only goes where it's already colored. Where there's nothing, it stays nothing. So we have to turn alpha lock off, but I only wanna mess around inside the, inside the area. So I can, go into my layer menu and click select, which basically does the same thing as alpha lock because this area is selected and outside of it is not. So now I can go into liquefy and I can take like twirl left, the turn the distortion way up, the size way down and I can like Let's mess up my water and make it look like it's really, roiling. So this is just cool way. And that's basically the same thing I did on the hair on the girl here. And then um, you'll notice here on the water, it, cha it changed the edge of it a little bit because it, it brought some of the empty areas into the royal link. So you can go in with smudge or painting or whatever, and you can, you can put, put some of that back. What I did on the girl's hair was I wanted the edge of her hair smooth. So I picked the smooth brush in my, I lost in your my picture. plotting round brush. Yes, Not what? A, lost Something your picture. Happened. Yeah, so did I. Oh, my phone, um, is it back? Yep. <laughs> You're back. My phone wasn't charging. Thank you. Oh gosh, it's still not charging. Ugh. Well, we might have to be almost done if I can't get my phone to charge. We'll see how long it stays on. Um, what I did though, is I erased, I erased to clean up the edge on the girl's hair, because I wanted her to have 
kind of a smooth edge on her hair. So I erased like that on the edge to make it the shape I wanted. Um, there's another example of hair I did the same way. I think it's so fun. Um, just using, you know, you just paint some kind of texture, color splotches in the area, select it, and then go in the liquify and, and push it around and just do anything. So it just makes really fun hair. I kind of want to do a whole comic with the hair done this way on my characters. Um, this is the random stuff. I'm going to zoom through really quick. These are some random things I did with liquify that you can just do, just play with it. Paint colors on your paper. This is the pinch. I had a bunch of colors and I just pushed pinch, pinch, pinch. And it made some flowers. Same thing here. I, hold, I held pinch down a really long time and it made this. And I just had all different colors on the paper. Here you can see I did the twirling with the distortion on. Yeah, I think my batteries, my battery's gonna die. Um, so I wanted to show you real quick and then we can just talk. Um, the last thing, which is you can use this on text. So in this drawing, whoops, this color, I have a layer of text and I just thought it looked a little boring. So I duplicated my layer. So I would, in case I had typos in all that text, I didn't have to type it over. And then I went in liquify and I just used pushed to push it around and I made it like that. And I think it just like adds so much to the picture um, for the text to be more dynamic, right? So I used push, no distortion. And I just did a little bit Went to just kind of go with the shape of the area it was in. And you don't want to get too carried away with this because, you know, then you can't read the text. But if you do it just a little bit, I think it really adds like character to it. And you'll never get it the same way twice. Never. You will never ever get it the same way twice. So if you don't like it, undo it. Go back in the liquify, change the brush setting maybe a little bit and, and try it again. Oops, too far. You can, you can try some of this with warp also instead of, um, instead of liquify. You can go into the transform arrow and pick warp or distort. When you pick the distort, you can pull like one corner at a time. So you can also change the shape of, of text like that. And warp, you can make it curve around. So warp and liquify um, sometimes do similar things. So you could try both of them. Yeah. And so my phone's down to 10% battery. So I'm gonna un, um, unpin myself and we can just like chat a little bit, I think. and because it's going to die real quickly. I don't know why it's plugged in, but it, my cable must be dead. So I'm going to figure out how to remove spotlight and we can just chat. Which is so, cute. so I don't know, any of you have ideas now where you might be able to use liquify? Yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Um, Susan said there's a lot more control with liquify versus warp. Yes, warp is, um, it, it only, first of all, it only does, it's basically like push with less, yes, you, cause you just get that grid with nine squares and you can move the points on it. So it's, it's less precise, but it does work sometimes for, for things that might be, um, but it's up to you. You can always use push, but I use warp sometimes for, the, I use it a lot for distorting faces and stuff. I think it's, it's fun for that. You can just select the eyes and nose and mouth and distort the facial features, or you can select the whole head and play with it. And sometimes, um, sometimes it, the effect comes out a little better than liquify for that to me, because of the way the pieces move together when you use the warp tool. It's just some technical way it works in the background. I don't know, but you could try both if you're not getting what you want. Um, Audrey, do you have your hand up from before or now? 
No, I have it up now. I, I have a very, very basic question. It's about okay. color drop. And oh, when, yeah. I do like a, when I do a solid line and I want to co put color in, it ends up coloring the whole page. If I draw a circle, a solid circle, and I want to put yellow in it, then the whole page yeah, yeah. goes yellow. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can do this before my battery dies. <laughs> um, I'm going to make a new document. I'm going to take a pink. I'm going to take a, a brush. I'm going to draw a circle. OK, now when I go to drop my color in, that time it worked. Sometimes it does that, right? Right. Sometimes it does that, and sometimes it does the whole page. So what's happening is when you drop your color, before you let go, look up here, there's a line that says color threshold. If your whole page fills like that, drag it to the left until it just goes in your shape. If you drag it all the way to the right, it fills more stuff. If you drag it to the left, it fills less stuff. Oh, okay. So that's the color threshold and that's what you wanna do. And you have to do that before you pick it up. So drag the color in before you pick your pencil up, you can change the color threshold. Oh. So if your whole page is filling, it means you have to drag that pencil to the left until it pops into just the shape. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yep. That's exact. Um, that's exactly what's happening there, and everybody does that because you don't even notice that that's there uh, most mm -hmm. of the time. So we have a really technical question here. From um, I'm trying to remove the spotlight, but I'm not sure why it didn't go away. Um, we have a really technical question here. So I want to spotlight my other self. I can't find my other self. Oh, there I am. Uh, spotlight for everyone. Okay, so the other question is that I make my snood here. So this is my bad hair day hat really is what it's called. And now I bought it in Latvia, isn't it cool? Like, um, Bad hair day hats are really popular in Lithuania and Latvia. And <laughs> usually though, they pull them all the way down under their ears and so no hair shows at all, but I prefer it yeah. this way. <laughs> so I might cut the video off before we talk about my little hat, but um, yeah, future. Should we do another section on masks? Definitely, I will add that to the list, another section on masks. I'm getting a pretty big list of topics to to ask about. Yeah, the flowers, right? They're really cool. I love how they crocheted them in. Yeah. So the session where you included well. the session where you included information about masks before was so wonderful. I almost could get my head wrapped around it, but it's the one that the video was screwed up. Oh so yeah, I need saved. to do that again. And I need to do the color one again, especially with adding highlights and shadows and flatting, because that was that was really cool. Um, maybe I'll repeat one or both of those soon because I have, I have all the material for them. And now that I got my YouTube, my uh, whatever fixed, my Zoom fixed so it doesn't record the little teeny video. <laughs> um, yeah, because masks are complicated and there's three kinds, at least three kinds of masks. There's the alpha lock, which is a kind of mask. There's the clipping mask. And there's a layer mask. And then a selection is sort of also a temporary mask. So yeah, um, basically, you know where the term mask comes from? Just can help you maybe wrap your head around a little bit. Masking tape. You're masking mm -hmm. out the area that you're not gonna be able to paint on. The mask is the masking tape. It's blocking something and um, you know, maybe that'll help you with the concept of what's going on. And of course, it doesn't help that there's three or four different ways to do it. Um, you know, but then there's, you put them above, not, not below, and then to remove, you use white or black. Right. And, yeah. And, yeah. And then, it's, uh, right. Sometimes the mask is attached to the layer and you can't move it around. Sometimes it's attached to a different layer. Yeah. <laughs> 
So um, yeah, I'll do a, a thing on that because masks are super useful if once you can get your head wrapped around what's going on. Yeah, Donna? and I, I, I think I, I understand them because I got a job once because I knew what a mask was, <laughs> a mask layer or an alpha lock. So <laughs> yeah, so, Donna, so old knowledge for me. Yes, I have a quick question, Donna. Could you okay. show me how to put uh, my brush into the favorites? Like I really like the syrup brush. Oh, I'm, I'm, going try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Uh, all again depends on my battery dying, right? Okay. Okay. Replace spotlight. Um, my phone battery dies. Maybe the power went in because it hasn't died yet, right? Okay. So um, when you go into your brushes, mm -hmm. you have all these folders of brushes. Right. And you don't want to look for your brush every time, right? No. So you want to make a folder called favorites. Did you already do that? Yes, okay. but I can't get anything so, in it. You didn't have anything in it. Okay, so my favorite has stuff in it, but let's go here and take this cherry blossom brush. Okay. And I'm going to sw swipe to the left and duplicate it because I want to keep it where it was. So it's still in right. the original set where it came from, but I want to move this one. So I'm going to click on it and hold and see I can move it now as I click and hold. I can take it out of here I can go into favorites, tap my favorites, then go inside the favorites and drop it. And now it's inside the favorites. Don't drop it on the name of the favorites. That's what I've been Drag doing. it into the list after you click favorites. So again, we'll do another one. We'll do this big palm leaf, duplicate it, click and hold, drag it out, click on your favorites and see, oops, Click on your favorite so it opens and drag it inside the list and you can drop it wherever you want in the list. I mean, I could go way up by the top and oh, you drop it in there. Now and I you know. can move things in around it by click and hold and change the order they're in. Oh, I appreciate that so much. Yeah. So now I know I kept trying to put it right smack on top of the favorites and it wouldn't do it. Yeah, if you try to drop it onto the name of the list, nothing happens. That should work. Technically, because you. Um, you know that's how a lot of things work on the iPad and the and the Mac and stuff, but it, that doesn't work in this case. Also, this is a new feature that you might have noticed, but there's a recents brush folder at the very top of your list. So the brushes you've been, you know, here's all the brushes I used um, in this class and this morning. They're yeah. in my recents brush list. I don't know how it decides if it has six or 10 or the brushes you used in the last 48 hours or what, but the most yeah. recent brushes you used will be in there. So Thanks. if you're going back and forth between two or three brushes on a particular drawing, you can just stay in the recents folder and they'll all stay in there. That's what I've been relying on. And then they disappear. So I yeah, eventually they disappear. So having a favorites, um, a favorites or, or I make, um, I call it Donna Best. I don't really use the favorites. I use Donna Best. Don't ask me why. Um, but yeah. And then sometimes if I start a new project, I might make a new folder for that comic because there might be special brushes I'm using for that comic. Like the next one I'm doing is going to have a lot of plaid in it. So I have all these plaid brushes here, but there's really only two or three of them that I use. So I would, you know, move those into the folder of my favorites or favorites for that project because I don't then I don't have to go find the plaids folder and like I'm never going to use this one I'm never going to use that one you know I know which ones I'm going to use so I can just put them into my my thing I love all these weird brushes I have lace brushes I got fabric textures I got frost brushes procreate is like so freaking cool <laughs> with all these okay. things you can do. But um, a lot of them, I mean, I use like 2% of the brushes I have probably. Um, but I, but, but say I bought a set that had 40 brushes, you know, like I bought, I bought this Ghibli brush set. It's got like, you know, 90 brushes in it or something. I don't even know. And I use like eight of them, but I couldn't get them anywhere else. So it was worth it, you know, and I use these leaves a lot and this grass a lot and, um, you know, whichever ones I use a lot, I 
you know, and then you, you develop your own style and you use certain brushes that just make things look the way you like them. And that's what, that's really what your style is. And your line, your line, no line here, cause I don't have a brush, but your line, um, <laughs> when you try to draw and you have a certain kind of line that you make, it's just kind of natural, like your handwriting. So this, like, if I want to make like a little scumbling thing, mine's going to come out a certain way because that's just my natural line and go with it, man, because that's going to make your work look really unique. Like to me, that's like, that's, that's hair. Could be other stuff too, but it's curly hair. And my hand just makes certain kinds of quirky things when I move it and it just does that automatically. So I've been uh, reading that book uh, by Quentin Blake, Start With the Scribble. And I've been trying to do a lot of Start With the Scribble stuff. And you can get some really cool comic stuff, Start With the Scribble. <laughs> this could be the beard, right? If I go back down here, this could be a beard. <laughs> Put some ears. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but you can like, you can come up with some really cool characters just by letting your hand speak in its own language. Um, you know, and of course you will practice. Just think of all the hours you spent practicing A, B, C, right? When you were a kid and now you can write A, B, C. Um, so, you know, I've spent hours practicing stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I love to, I love to cross hatch and stuff. So this is a practice thing you can do. You can draw some of your curvy lines that you like just all over the page, right? And this is something to do when you're watching TV. And then just inside each area, try a different kind of cross hatching or stippling and you can do this on paper or procreate you can try out different brushes and i know they sell brushes to do stippling and cross hatching and stuff but it won't have your personality if you you know use a brush for it instead of doing it yourself also i can make my hatching lines match the curves of my shapes if i want you know and that's like contour hatching I spent, I can't tell you how many freaking thousands of hours I spend doing this, um, but I think that it's really useful. It's like all those hours you spent writing A, B, C, whoops, that's not how you write C. <laughs> you know, it's the same thing. You have to train your hand and you're just training it to do different things with drawing. Um, but then once you've trained it well enough, you have your own handwriting for drawing. It's, yeah, so I'm just looking at the chat. So um, yeah, look, talking about Susan has a highly modified watercolor brush. Yes, so some brushes um, do different things, whether they're tipped and what. And I find like um, when I work with uh, pastels, sometimes I hold my my pastels like this. You can do the same thing with Procreate, you don't have to hold your brush like you're writing. You can hold your brush any way you want. Um, you can hold it straight up and down. You can hold on the side. You can, you know, put it in your fist. Um, you can do that. I mean, it doesn't really matter. And the way you hold your brush or your, you know, real brush or crayon or pencil, you will get different, different lines with your hand. So it's really cool to play around with that. So that has nothing to do, none of that has anything to do with liquefy, but it's all cool procreate stuff that you can play with. So yeah, this is after two. So we'll wrap it up and this will be, um, yeah, in the procreate tech tips topic in the Mighty Network, 
when the video's ready, I will post the link there. And it's also, all these videos are in the Sequential Artist Workshop YouTube channel, and there's a playlist for the Procreate stuff as well. So you can find it in either of those places. I think the YouTube channel sometimes is easier to find stuff than the Mighty Network. So thank you all for coming. Thank you. I'm gonna shut up the awesome, recording. Donna. Thank, thank you, Donna. Donna. So empowering. Thank you so much, Donna. Yay, yeah. because oh, you know. No. It's